Frank Silent, Frank Silent, Frank Silent. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get that on set? Yeah, that was. Anyway, um, hi. You look nice. What's up? You look nice too. I haven't seen yeah. you in a long. We're lying. Stop. Don't you We're lie. Really You've been seeing me. He's been seeing me a lot. He came from Puerto Rico to support me in this whole. When I did four shows and I did New York, I did Connecticut, I did Connecticut, I did DC too, right? DC, Philly, DC, Philly, and now I'm here again in DC. You're here, so I'm, I was so glad you stayed. So, hey, Frank's eye. <laughs> oh, <Kirk. laughs> oh, <Kirk. laughs> so, oh, I love it. Um, talk about the shows. How how was it? You know, the shows have been a blast. You know, I'm I'm a nervous wreck before shows. I'm a nervous wreck like a week before shows, but they they always turn out great because I put my everything into the shows. And you know, I've just been blessed with some really great crowds and you know, true fans coming out to see me. And it's just really a testament to just how much support is out there for me. And I and I just I'm I'm so humbled by it. I'm so appreciative. There are moments where I, you know, I get very shy on stage and I get very, you know, like, oh, this is great. I didn't imagine, you know, seeing, you know, so many people and then going to intimate spaces and then seeing so many people. Like it's all it all feels the same because love just feels the same everywhere. But you know, I've been able to do big crowds and smaller crowds too. It's been great. You claim to love me, you said you'd do for me, you said you'd care for me, you said you'd stay with me, you did you love me, and did you hold me? A few months ago, I don't, I don't know, maybe a little more than a few months ago, there was a moment where you were like, there was a lot of clapping back going on oh, yeah, on yeah, the ground. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of clapping back. And I got a, I got a clap back from you like, stop, <laughs> you better quit it. But this, I'm like, wait a minute, this is the person that you always wanted me to be. This is true. <laughs> you know, because you was the one of the ones like, you need to speak up sometimes and defend yourself. And you know, so. Why did that happen? What did, was there a transition where you just was like, you know what? I no, because I know exactly who I am. And I'm humbled by what I have found out about me and what's, what is inside of me. The gift that is inside of me is God. I know that for a fact. And so that has truly humbled me. But with that humility came security, mm. a guard for, you know, the heart of gold. Because, you know, I'm, my heart is so, it's weird saying this about myself, but I know that my heart is pure. I know that I... Um, will give my last to a stranger, you know what I mean? It's like I have that kind of ability. I have the ability to unconditionally love people. And with that kind of purity comes a very sensitive um, heart and a person. Like I'm a very sensitive person. I can cry at the, the drop of a dime. You know, I can feel everything. I'm a vessel. I'm, I'm made to feel. I'm made to sing things, to emote, and to emote emotions. So I feel... Um, I feel everything in a little bit heavier than the average person. So with true humility and with knowing that God is the gift inside of me, all the gifts that, that God has become inside of me, there became, you know, a confidence as well. And sometimes people come for my life. And I've watched it for years. People come for my life. And I don't care at this point what people think, but I get a kick out of sometimes reminding people that you just can't come on um, my page hiding behind any type of identity. You're not even yourself. Your page is private. You don't have any of your pictures showing. You know, some people's weaves look a mess while you're coming <laughs> for my hair, you know, whatever. But it's like to me, sometimes I, I get a kick out of reminding them because it's not, it's, I'm not bothered. I just have a voice now and I use it from time to time, not all the time, just time to time, you know, and I, and that was liberating for me because for so long, you know, 
people were calling me things that were just distasteful and just completely just what you would never say to my face. If y'all saw me in Sephora today, the haters, y'all wouldn't know what to do with yourselves because I would be this. They'd be asking for a picture. Yeah, you would be asking for a picture because I'm that approachable. You know, I was doing the kid and play today with, with one of the managers at Sephora. He was so young, he didn't even know what foot to do. I taught him the kid and play and then we did it. So it's like, I'm just, I'm a very, um, I'm, I'm a good person and I, and I love my life and I love the God in my life. And so sometimes I have to put people in their place. Like don't, don't come here talking when you don't even know, you don't, you don't even know how I handle my mind or what, how, what I do to, you know, be poised or what I do to be a good mom and things like that. You, you don't work on your mind the way I do. So please don't come over here talking shit <laughs> behind your fake identity with your two followers. Like I'm not having it all the time. I have it sometimes, but not all. How is it coming from? Because, you know, the 90s, there was no social media, there was yeah. no haters. And if there was, it was we haters. didn't really know. Oh, yeah, it was haters, and it was but radio. But now you're getting it, like, at your doorstep, yeah, on your pages. Yeah, getting it on my page. It's, like, amazing, like, how uh, people will really sit down and just, like, take the time to actually come up with something negative and just type it as if, like, you have that kind of a right. Like, I would never go to somebody's page and just start talking negative about them. I don't even form negative opinions right. about people to even have the time to, to use the iPhone to type things out when the iPhone gonna change the words up anyway. I don't have time to be correct to the iPhone and then posting it on your page. Like, who has time to do that? Like, I could never do that to hurt somebody on purpose. Like, I don't know where people go to hurt somebody on purpose. I can only defend myself. I can never come at you first and, and attack your life. You have to attack my life for me to even put my fist up. You know what I mean? I, I don't know where people go to intentionally hurt somebody first. Damn right, I wanna know her name. Tell me how you know her, baby. Why does she make that face? You look so ashamed. What are you not saying, boy? I'm really not playing, boy. There was stuff that came out that uh, there was a settlement between you and the label. Not to go into it, but can you now finally release music? I can do music. I was doing, I was trying to do music in that, yeah. in that position. You know, I did begging and pleading in that position. And my whole dream, it wasn't for the song to become a hit. It was just, I just wanted to just get it on iTunes. That was like my, my dream was to get it on iTunes. If I get it on iTunes, I can go fight and get my get everything back and and I just I just had a good time with that song. It just I was singing higher than I was supposed to be singing. That's why it's always low when I when I sing it. Can we talk about that? Cause you always you always say that like oh it's too high it's too the, but you do it. I do it because what happens is in the studio is oh, where okay. I can squeeze and push and try. Okay. You know I try so hard in the studio and I in. I think this is, this is what I figured out about the whole vocal Bible thing. It's because I've pushed my voice to every limit. I've done everything you can possibly imagine with my own voice. And I think that's why somewhere in there, that's where that, that's where that, that, that title comes from. That's the only thing I can think of. You know, I have sang in, 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 in every single range you can possibly think of that I'm not supposed to be singing in because I'm not a soprano, I'm, I'm, I'm an alto tenor. And so I'll push my voice to the limit to be an, ah, ah, ah. like I'm singing like that girl, that's not your range. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I, but I, but I try things and I go in and I try to shock myself because I just, I'll just try. Um, and so, but, but live, I don't try live. I have to know exactly what it is that I'm doing. I practice, I practice what I'm gonna do. I practice how I'm gonna sing when I'm singing because I wanna be great live. I gotta know my breath control. I gotta know what it is that I'm doing. Sometimes you'll see me like tonight, I didn't move around a lot. I was just concentrating on vocals and concentrating on making sure I was tight, you know what I mean? But I really care about being great, being my greatest self in every moment that I get a chance to be me. Have you officially started recording for the album? Yes, but I'm gonna really get into the bulk of things uh, 
later on this month. Okay. Like really like where I'm locked in and I'm so excited for that process because it's it's been a long time coming and it I'm just ready. I'm I feel ready. I know that I'm ready. Because you've recorded a few songs in the last two mm -hmm. or three years. Are those some of those gonna be part of it or are you trying to just no. I don't I don't I don't know everything. I have to hear everything first okay. to know exactly what what's going to be on and what's not, but um I'm I'm going down the right path. Um a lot of the times where I've like suffered not being able to get my music out to the masses it's because I was singing the wrong songs. Mm. I'm going to make sure I don't sing the wrong songs this time around. And the belief and by, by wrong songs, what do you mean by that? Just to clarify. They were not songs that were for me. I didn't like when I don't believe in a song, I shouldn't do it because my belief in the song and my belief in myself and the song will not come together. So that equals no masses. You can't reach everybody if you don't believe in your song and you don't believe in yourself on the song. Like, yeah, I can make a song sound good, but if I don't believe in the song, then it's not going to go anywhere. Never say never. About to be 20. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Has it registered? Like no, 20 years? it hasn't registered. No. It hasn't. I, don't, I don't feel like I did that 20 years ago. 20 years went by fast. Because I'm, I'm so young now on the inside. Like, I'm 11 years old on the inside. Right. You know, I'm smart as hell and it, wisdom up the yin yizzle, but my spirit is young. It's so, it's so very, very young. I don't ever want to shake that. Do you have a, a, a favorite song off that album aside from, because we know it almost doesn't count. Oh, but I love almost doesn't count, but I love Hard Way too. How, I used to listen to Hard Way all the time, like it wasn't me. And so I took your advice. I put um, Hard Way, I put, um, Put that on everything in my show. If you're looking to find a love that will stand till the end of time, baby, relax your mind. My love is here, yeah. Do everything, I swear. The pain and the hurt you won't notice. Once will be nothing. Put that on everything. Are you and Ray J going to be doing any more stuff together? I really want to. I think Ray J and I are, are, are undiscovered together. Our voices are the same, but it's not the same. So you hear the difference, but you hear the same. And it's like, was that Ray J? Was that Brent? Like, I love yeah. that to, to be able to, like, do that kind of stuff vocally with him. Like, and he's the only one I could do that with. And Sarah, you know, Sarah and I will sing together and voice memo it. And then we'll go back and we can't tell who's who. That's my daughter. Like, it's just like that, you know. But Ray J is the only other somebody that I could do that with. And so I want to do more of that with him. How is it singing with your daughter? Like, when was the first moment you knew, like, okay, she has something there? When she sang Annie, get your gun on my computer. She was five years old. And she was like, where the gun? With the gun, I was like, whoa, that's your voice at five? Wow. Yes. <laughs> I was like, yes, baby. So, you know, I just think now, you know, growing up and, you know, being my daughter, you know, um, she's really shy to sing, but her voice is untouchable. It's amazing. She has the boss, she has the passion, she can write her own songs. Like the first song she wrote is, is already a smash. Like she's writing her own songs because she's going through things at 15. Um, it's about that time, you know, where they, get, they start to get involved in, right. in their lives and they become, you know, individuals and boys get into play and, you know, stuff like that that I can't really control. I can only monitor and, and help her mind stay, you know, in the right, right place and guide her. Um, but she's, she's unbelievable. I'm amazed by her, like amazed, truly her biggest fan, not biased at all. Cause if my baby couldn't sing, I would just say, baby, you don't have it, <laughs> but she's got it. I know? have to ask about the princess 
baby shower situation? Oh, I really wanted to be at the baby shower, but I was in... Um, you had a show. I had a show. So that happened. I know my mom would just not not show up to the baby shower. There, there was something there that I don't, I, don't, I don't really ask about because, you know, families get into it all the time, but it's, it's something about when families get into it, it hurts more. It stings a little bit more than just like a regular person that you get into, you know, an argument with. But you know, that's families go through things, and this is a new situation. This is a this is a baby. This is you know, it's all new. So everybody wants it to go right, and even though sometimes it doesn't always turn out to be the way you want it to go, everybody has good intentions. So, you know. That baby will change everybody's life. So I'm really looking forward to that. Really yeah, looking forward to being on TV. Yeah, TTV. Let's talk about the weight gain. Cause, oh, know, yes. People were saying. They've been this saying. This baby would have been, been like, what, two and a half by now? Two, 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 two and, and a half. Old. But you know what's crazy? It's like when I was 23, I fibbed about being married because I wanted to have my baby. And I thought that if I didn't say I was married, then I would, you know, I, I didn't want to lose my fans. I didn't want to disappoint anybody, which is why I just said, well, I don't want to just go down the aisle just to go down the aisle just because I'm pregnant. I want to be ready to do that. So let's, let's just say that I'm, you know, married or whatever, which was the wrong thing to do. I don't think I've lied since then in the press, which is why I shouldn't do so many interviews because all I know how to do now is tell the truth. So, um, but yeah, I would not be embarrassed to be, I mean, I was pregnant out of wedlock then. Why would, if I'm out of wedlock now, why would I be, you know, ashamed of a baby? And like, it's funny how people are telling me that I'm pregnant. Like, first of all, you don't know what's going on right. in my stomach. Like, how you go, first of all, you can't do that. No, what well, I know you. No, you are pregnant. You are. When is the baby due? Like, and it really be like it's, that. It's just like, girl, you don't know me to say that, and you don't know what's going on. I think it's. I did. I didn't think the uh, the pregnancy thing was body shaming. Like people were calling that body shaming, and I didn't feel that from people who obviously thought that I put on weight and she's got to be pregnant. Like I didn't take offense to that for years, you know, but. It's been years now. I went on a foodcation because I've been eating clean for like seven something odd years in the gym every day, playing tennis. I'm like, yo, I'm tired of this crazy discipline. I need something to eat. I want some pasta, I want some pizza, I want some cake. I want something other than salmon, broccoli, and asparagus nice. and water. Every day, and I was like, "Listen, I, I, I can't. I need right after Roxy in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. I went on a foodcation. I went on a foodcation, honey. And I'm telling you, it has been, it has been very tough for me to want to get off of. What's your favorite snack or thing to get now on this food, foodcation? That cake, uh, the cake that was at that hotel in D.C. And I love Wendy's. Wendy's is a number ten. With a strawberry lemonade, large, and I love wow. apple pies from McDonald's, especially overseas, um, because they got the fried ones overseas. But I know that it's time for me to drop. My goal is 15 because I don't want to go back to that skinny brandy that looked too skinny, I didn't have any boobs and don't have the butt that I have now. I want to keep some of that. I just want a flat stomach and that's it. Because <laughs> I don't want to be looking pregnant if I'm not. How does it feel, because you know, dealing with the haters is one thing common, but then you have people like, I think Charlemagne said something on The Breakfast Club. The Charlemagne thing really hurt my feelings. I'm going to be totally honest. Like people don't get to me, but like I said, when people genuinely think I'm pregnant and just don't want to say that I gain weight, I don't, I don't feel like they have bad intentions towards me. That's why it never really bothered me when people would say it. Mm -hmm. But when he said it, he said it knowing that I'm not pregnant. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I could feel his... So it was like an intention type of thing. It was an intention to hurt me. It was intention to hurt somebody. And then you did it in front of my brother. 
and tried to ask Princess, yo, is Brandy due around the same time you do? No, Brandy is overdue with as long as people live. Well, that's what the rumors say. And then Angela Yee, def like, yo, don't do that, Sean. Like, she was real. She really, really had my back in the street. She was like, don't do that, Charlamagne. That's body shaming. You can't do that to people. What? What? That's what. And it just, it, it just, it really hurt my feelings because I don't even care about what you said. It's your intention. Like, how can you go there? Like, I'm a woman. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a black right. woman. I'm a mother of a, of a turning 16 year old. I come from a good family, and I'm, I'm clean out here in these streets. You're so Aww. bad. You're so bomb. Thank you. You, you are, are so bomb. Too. Seriously. Nice to meet you. Oh, look at her. She's looking like You're so bomb. You're so bomb, and you don't even know that. Oh, my Lord. You're you on Star now, though. Yes. Fox. Fox. You with some legends. Hell Patty yeah. LaBelle and Patty LaBelle. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah, to sing that song with them was such an amazing experience. Were you in the studio at the same time? We or? were not in the studio at the same time, unfortunately. I'm kind of glad because, I mean, who going to sing anything in front of Patti LaBelle? Right. You know, without getting choked up. So um, I was really hoarse, too, the day I was getting ready to record. And I was like, oh, my God. So I gave it all I got in a, in a raspy range. And when Miss Patty heard it, she was like, I like your voice, raspy. I was like, Ooh. and she was like, yes, I love your voice, Razzy. I was like, yes. I was so scared I wasn't going to, you know, make the cut because my voice was really, you know, hoarse that day. But I pulled it on together. Queen Latifah did her thing. And we just, we bonded. We connected. And that's why I think it, it went over so well because we really bonded as a family. And it's like to see Miss LaBelle being a gangster and me being a gangster was hilarious to me. Queen helps me a lot. Like she'll say, you got it, you got it. Just because I have a big problem with sass mouthing her, you know, like like having a sassy mouth towards Queen Latifah because I'm still a huge, oh, okay, I, I fangirl with her. So I feel like, okay, first of all, it's her show. So like the time where she she said you need you put on a little weight or you 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 getting big so you need to lose some weight, and like I could have said something back to her or whatever like but I couldn't it could not come out so I was like my man like my way <laughs> I had to go I had to go to that because I'm not about to I'm not about to upstage Queen on her show while she walking out too I'm not about to say nothing behind her back like that I just told my mama my man like my way you know what I mean whatever just. And she's coming for me, like, but I'm, I can't, it's like I can't go back at her. So, you know, we have a scene together, like, um, you know, later in the show where it's like I got to really, like, go up against her. And I, like, had, I couldn't sleep the night before. I was like, yo, how am I going to do this? I talked to my best friend who asked, like, yo, like, what am I going to do? I have a, I can't, I have a problem going up against Queen. So her, everybody's queen is telling me, I'm Carlotta. I'm like, that don't help. You are queen to me. You can't tell right. me about no, nothing about no Carlotta. I see Cleo. Okay, I see Betsy and all these other streets. I can't see uh, Carlotta. Um, yeah. Are there any artists you like? I know earlier we were talking about Cardi B. I love Cardi B. Yeah. I love her because of her spirit. And I love her music. But her spirit, her authenticity, her thank you to God for what she cannot believe about her life. That's how she got me. And then them, them bloody shoes. And now I'm on to, oh, grr, and I know I'm late. But Cardi B taught me that. Okay. Any advice for Cardi B? She's pregnant now and dealing with the career. You Listen, were pregnant. You and can had do it, girl. You can do everything that you want to do. You are set. You are thanking God for everything you have. You are being, you know, an example. You ha always have a message and something to say, whether you cuss in the streets or not. We can take home something for what, for some of the things that she says. Like she, she has a heart of gold. And I just pray for her life. I pray for her baby and that she can connect. Of course, she's going to connect to her baby and just be a good example. She's already setting a great example right now for, for everybody. And I'm just really proud of her. I'm proud of her. Her humility at such a young age. She's 25 years old with that kind of yeah. humility. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's just, That's and it's great, to, it's great to see how much she has worked hard and how much she talks about how hard that she works. And she talked about just her game plan and how she 
can't believe it even though she laid the groundwork but she right, still right. can't believe it you know it's just and how honest she is about growing in her music like how she wants to grow and get better like she's everything